standard 7 subject civics today let us learn features of the constitution in the last two lessons we studied how our constitution was made we studied its preamble and understood terms like sovereign socialist secular democratic Republic. The goals expressed in the preamble are the characteristic features of a constitution as well. Apart from these, the constitution also has other features. So, we shall try to understand these in the present chapter. So, let's learn something more about the constitution of India. Federalism. One of the important features of our constitution is the federal system. Now, in countries with large territories and huge populations, government is run by a federal system like that of India. Ruling a large territory from a single capital city is not only difficult but may also lead to the neglect of some far-flung areas. So, for the convenience of the people, people that are residing there cannot participate in the affairs of the government. So, for their convenience, government functions at two levels in a federation. Okay. Now, let's see. The government at the center carries out tasks, certain tasks like defense, of the entire country okay so these tasks are carried out for the entire country and hence we call it as a federal government or the union government which tasks are carried out by this union government defense of entire country foreign policy okay having foreign relations and establishing friendly relations with them for mutual benefits then establishing peace and etc all these are the tasks that the government carries out at the central level it is also called union government or federal government okay so whatever activities are carried out by central government we call it as union government or federal government it carries out the administration of the entire country. Okay. Now, the government that oversees the administration of the region that we live in is called state government. It looks after the administration of a particular state. Okay. So, separate provisions are given as per the state. For example, now, this different states, you can see in the map of India, they have their separate rules as per the state and it is called state administration or state government. One example of this is government of Maharashtra. You live in Maharashtra state. So, the administration of Maharashtra is carried out by the state of Maharashtra which is called Maharashtra government or government of Maharashtra. The system of running the administration of a country cooperatively by the government at two levels making laws about different subjects is called federalism. So what exactly is federalism? Division of power between state and and national government and working together for the development of the nation. Okay. So, you have got a clear idea of what is federalism. Now, let's study about the separation of powers. How powers are separated and allotted. Okay. So, let's study about separation of powers. You will see legislative, executive 
and judicial powers. So, as you studied just now, the central government takes up some tasks like defense, foreign, establishing peace, etc. And some tasks are given to the state government. The state government has to look after it. So, the central government, the functioning is through parliament. And the state government is through state legislature. Okay. The constitution has divided the subjects of making laws between the union government that is the central government and the state government let us see which government is interested with what subjects a constitution has given three list of various subjects okay so now we will have a look at the list which is made for the citizens of india the first list is called a union list. It contains 97 subjects. Okay, we will come to it later. So, first let's see which are the three lists that are there in a constitution. A constitution has given us three lists, right? So, the first one is union list. Second is the state list. And the third one is the concurrent list. Okay, now let's have a look at the first list that is a union list. It contains 97 subjects on which the union government makes laws. Okay, so various topics are covered, various subjects are covered in union list, the biggest list which contains 97 subjects. Then we come to state list. The state list is for the state government to legislate upon, means to work upon. It contains 66 subjects. Okay. Apart from this two list, there is a third list which is called as a concurrent list. And this concurrent list contains 47 subjects. Now, both governments can make laws on subjects included in the concurrent list. Union list is governed by the central government. State list is governed by the state government. But concurrent list, again, union government has a right. Okay. And even the state government. So, both governments can make laws on subjects included in the concurrent list, which are 47 subjects. If a subject comes up, that is not included in any of the list, then the union government, that is the central government, is entitled to make laws on it. These powers are termed as residuary powers. Okay. Do you know the division of powers in the Indian constitution is unique. It enables the union government and the state government to bring about the country's progress by cooperating with each other. This also encourages participation of citizens in the administration of the country. Okay, that means we have 29 states and 7 union territories. So These 29 states have their own state administration. This way power is divided. Now, let's see who deals with what subjects? First, subjects with the union government. Okay. Let's see. Defense. You have already gone through the subjects with the union government in the beginning of this chapter. Let's have a look. Defense. Then, foreign relations. War and peace. Currency, international trade, etc. All these subjects are covered under the union government. Okay. Now second, subjects with the state government. So what authority the state government has got or what rules and regulations can be implied through the state government. The subjects which are covered are agriculture. Law and order, 
okay then we have local government for both rural and urban areas health all the decisions rules and regulations regarding health can be taken under the state government prison administration all these are the subjects with the state government okay and lastly third one there are subjects with both the governments okay like employment both the governments can look upon this environment then economic and social planning right now in the society you see due to the pandemic social distancing has to be maintained okay social distancing is a very much required uh, we can say is the need of the hour why because of the pandemic and people have to be safe so who has taken the measures now for this both governments state government announces from time to time what measures have to be taken and at the same time the central government that is a union government also announces certain rules and regulations to be followed so social planning comes under both the governments okay then personal law regarding a particular religion it comes under both the governments or it could be any personal law and education education is also a subject with both the governments the state government and the union government so this way we have learnt about who deals with what subjects now let us learn about union territories in india there is a union government okay 29 state governments and seven union territories union government that is a central government who looks after the entire country then there are 29 states so 29 state governments are there and we have seven union territories the union government controls the union territories the union territories do not have a separate power of their own the union government rules it following are the seven union territories so you can have a look at the map which is on page number 74 of your textbook all the union territories are mentioned there those are new delhi daman and diu puducherry chandigarh dadra and nagar haveli andaman and nicobar islands and lakshadweep all right so this way we have seven union territories uh, which are marked on the map of india on page number 74 now let's study about parliamentary system of government the indian constitution has provided for a parliamentary system of government okay in such a system the parliament that is legislature has the highest decision making power indian parliament includes the president lok sabha or the house of the people and rajya sabha which is also called the council of states the council of ministers that runs the administration emerges from the lok sabha and is answerable to the lok sabha for all its decisions in parliamentary democracy the discussion and debates that take place in the parliament have great significance now let us study about independent judiciary the indian constitution has created an independent judiciary the disputes that cannot be resolved mutually are referred to the judiciary that means people move to the court the court hears both the con contesting parties looks into the injustice if any and gives its judgments 
this has to be done impartially so lawyers are there in the court who fight a case and then the judgment is passed by the judge the constitution has made several provisions to ensure that the judiciary remains more and more independent for example judges are appointed by the president okay and not by the government it is not easy to remove the judges from their office now we are going to learn about single citizenship the indian constitution has granted a single citizenship to all indians that is indian citizenship a single citizenship is what we call as indian citizenship all right process of amending the constitution so certain amendments are done to the constitution of india from time to time as per the need there comes up a need to make changes or amendments in the provisions of the constitution why due to changing circumstances but frequent amendments to the constitution may lead to a situation of instability the procedure for amendment is specified in the constitution itself so as to ensure that an amendment is made only after giving it a careful consideration so simply there cannot be changes time and again the procedure for amendment in the constitution is unique it is neither too difficult nor too easy more scope has been provided for giving more consideration and thought to important amendments the procedure is also flexible to ensure that general amendments can be brought about easily so amendments means certain changes in a constitution of india from time to time so as an activity you can find out how many amendments have been made to the indian constitution till date next let's learn about election commission you must have read about the election commission in the newspapers right since india has adopted a democratic form of government people have to elect their representatives periodically okay so elections are conducted to elect our representatives for this the elections have to be conducted in a free and fair atmosphere only then will the citizens be able to elect a candidate of their choice without any fear or pressure if the government were to conduct elections there might be no guarantee of such free fair and just atmosphere for the elections right because then the government will try to elect their own candidates hence the constitution has entrusted the responsibility of conducting elections to an independent machinery this machinery is known as the election commission the responsibility of conducting all elections in india rests with the election commission so in this picture you can see that the election commission of india is a separate machinery which operates for the elections to be conducted in india so that's all about this chapter the indian constitution has some important characteristic features in this chapter we have studied only some of the important features another important feature of a constitution is the exhaustive provision of fundamental rights we shall study these in the next chapter so till then keep safe learn well and thank you